Hello guys, Robot one here coming at you with a new Yu-Gi-Oh! video and in today's Yu-Gi-Oh! video we're going to be looking at Dilemma YGO's first place Zephyr deck profile like Dilemma YGO is a friend that I made through the sealed only league and honestly this boy is the Zephyr King like if you think Triff is the good pendulum player boy this guy makes Zephyr win tournaments in new format he was doing Zephyr combos in the previous format and doing really well with Zephyr as well like honestly Dilemma Waijio pendulum boy and he managed to come first place with this deck uh, a tournament online or at locals he didn't specify to me but he did come first place with it and I'm assuming it was an online event and he did first place in a new format tournament and coming first place in a new format tournament with Zephra of all things like you don't you do not expect it you do not expect to see Zephra being the first place deck profile in a new format tournament like you expect to see sky striker you expect to see drytron you expect to see invoked but you don't expect to see zephyr and that's the cool thing about this this is a deck that you did not expect to see and would not expect to see so yeah let's actually go into talking about the deck now though because honestly there's a lot of cheeky text in here and a lot of philosophies in here that he told me about and i would love to talk about them and get into you but first of all let's go ahead and talk about the rounds he had because honestly he did really well throughout the tournament, only really dropping one game. So let's talk about it. So round one, he played against Drytron. He swift to owed them, didn't even matter. Round two, he played against Pendulum. Obviously, he's the better Pendulum player because he's playing Zephra, so he two owed them as well. Round three, he played Drytron again, where he two won, so he did drop one game throughout this tournament, but he did actually still win the game in the end. Round three, four, sorry, he played against Dragon Link. I think that would have been the new Dragoonity variant where you'd play like Romulus and all the new Dragoonity cards that came out in Ghost from the Past. So, and he went, won that though 2 0. I honestly didn't expect to see this on his list, but. He, he beat it 2-0, and then round 5 he beat Earth Machines, the Infinitrack, Trains, Machina, ma mix mash of Earth Machine cards. So, he swift 2-0'd 4 people and only dropped 1 game in this entire new format tournament, and that's just, that, that's mad! How, how he was able to do that with Zephra. So, we've talked about the round now. Let's actually go into the deck profile because he did give me some philosophy as to why he was playing some cards in his deck, which I am kind of, bet you're kind of confused about with the card that we're on top of right now. But let's go ahead and get into it. So, first of all, he's playing one Barrier Statue of the Storm Winds. This card is very obvious. He's playing the Reaper Docus package, so he can go ahead and make Reaper Docus, target a monster it points to, and then just go ahead and make Bo Sovereign uh, Bird of Sovereignty. So you can go ahead and special summon the Wind Barrier Statue during the end of the turn. That, that's pretty basic. You're just going to go ahead and summon it and just look at your opponent and be like, yeah, you can't special summon anything that's not a Wind Monster. Pretty basic for the, well, Wind Barrier Statue. There's nothing else to say about it. But next we have the Magical Musketeer engine he's playing. And he's playing three Starfire and one Calamity. And I was confused to see this well first. And he told me exactly why he plays it, and it made a lot of sense. Now, he plays this because Starfire plus any low scale in this deck is guaranteed Zephyroth. And that's because, literally, you normal summon the Starfire, you activate a low scale, be it Zephyrubin, be it Pilaka, be it um, the Yang Zing one here, the uh, Zephraxi, um, and then you go ahead and special summon the Calamity from the deck. So, normal summon, activate, special summon. Now, then you have two level 4 monsters, and what you do with these two level 4 monsters is you make Gallic Granite, and you use Gallic Granite's effect to search any rock monster, which is Zephrath. Zephrath is a rock monster that can be searched of Gallic Granite. And when he told me that, I was just like, What? <laughs> that's that's possible in this deck? And I was just like, wow, that's actually super good, especially seeing as how consistent this deck is already. He just added another layer of consistency into the deck thanks to this one card combo. Well, this two card combo, sorry. So it's just like absolutely insane. And also, he's made it even better because if he's going second. He's playing the Magical Musketeer Max here, where if your opponent has Spell and Trap cards, well, then you're just going to go ahead and special summon Mus Magical Musketeer's monsters from your deck. So, if your opponent say, has two monsters, sp Spell and Trap cards, sorry, then you're going to be special summoning both the Calamities and also the Starfire anyway. So that gives you more lines of play to go into bigger monsters. Like, honestly, 
it's absolutely insane thinking about this and how he has figured this out for the Zephyr deck it really does make a lot of sense and it really is cool and i think this could actually be an engine that could go into a lot of other pendulum decks as well if you really want to because like honestly when i saw this i was completely stunned to think that this was possible and having a rank 4 toolbox like this it's just absolutely insane, especially in a Pendulum deck. So, Starfire and Calamity combo might see play in some of my Pendulum decks now too. But, continuing on, he is playing 3 Cypher and Gamma and the 1 Driver. Only Hand Trap he's playing. I'm assuming he's playing this Hand Trap line because he wants to make, like, Omega and stuff so he can have that sort of tuner access. Or maybe use it to make an IP Mask Arena or maybe the um, Lambda, which you can actually get quite good resources off because you just go ahead and make Lambda at the end of your combo if you've opened the Gamma. So, Gamma is never truly dead. Um, he's also playing one Zephyr Pilica, one Zephyr Wendy, one Zephyr Ruben, uh, one uh, Zephyr Core, one Zephyr Naga, and three Zephyr, three uh, Zephyroni, and three Zephraxi. Now, I'm assuming the ratios are for these are because these are different names and they all have different effects whereas the Zephyr Pilica when it's summoned it allows you to go ahead and summon a Zephyr monster from your graveyard uh, Zephyr Wendy when it's summoned allows you to add a Zephyr monster from your extra deck to your hand um, Zephyr Ruben is uh, just literally a pop by popping a Zephyr card to control Zephyr Core is actually I don't know its exact effect so if this card is pendulum summoned or sent to the graveyard you can target one Zephyr card in your pendulum zone uh, special summon it so it's just a free special summon so if you do have like the Zephyr off, I guess um, no you can't actually summon Zephyr up, but if you have like a dead scale on in your in your pension zone and you don't want it there, you can just go ahead and get it out. Um, you also play the Zephyr Naga, which is another one that I don't actually know. And it's if this card is pension summon or sent to the graveyard, you can target one card and even play as pension zones. Return it to that. Okay, so it's just another way to get like Zephyr off out of the hand. So it's just like you get it out of your hand, so it can't be like maybe MST or something along those lines. But it's just another name, so you can go ahead and pension summon different names as well. Zephyroth is kind of obvious because it's the best, well, Zephyr card in the game. It's literally what makes Zephyr fully playable in the fact that it allows you to put your, well, first of all, it allows you to augment its scale. So if you have, like, I don't know, one scale, and you can just go ahead and send the Zephyr, uh, Zephyruni to the extra deck, and then it becomes a scale seven. So you're pretty much using it for that because it makes more consistency in the deck, and he's definitely playing the free Zephyruni for the pure fact that when it's pendulum summoned or when it's destroyed in the monster zone, you get to go ahead and add a Yang Zing card to your hand or a Zephyr Zephyr spell or trap card from your deck to your hand. So literally adding any Zephyr spell or trap or Yang Zing spell or trap uh, is just really good because you have a lot of different options to add, such as the Zephyr Oracle, you have the Zephyr Providence, you have the Yang Nine Pillars of the Yang Zing, which is counter trap, along with Divine Strike, which is another counter trap. So you have a lot of different options to search through your deck with this card, and it's just really strong being able to just search out two counter traps thanks to this being up free. And he's playing free uh, Zephraxi, I'm assuming for the same reason, just slightly different, where this one on Pendulum Summon allows you to turn something else into a Tuna Monster. So pretty much you just go ahead and target a different uh, Zephra Monster you summon, turn it into a, a Tuna Monster, and then just go ahead and make your 7, your 9, your 8, your 10, or your 6 right here, so you can do a lot of different things. So, very good cards, and then he obviously plays the one driver for the Gammas. Um, he's also playing free Zephra Oracle. Um, obvious reasons, such as any Zephra Monster from your deck to your hand, uh, Zephraf is going to probably be the most obvious one that you're going to add from your deck to your hand but he also explained to me that there's actually another reason why he plays this card and it's actually because with this one card he can search any monster in the game and that's because of its synchro effect where you can choose one monster from your deck and place it on top of your deck and the whole thing that he explained to me was is he go ahead he goes ahead and summons the Zephruni, he goes ahead and summons the treasure while oracle is on the board of course he synchros these two together and summons ravenous crocodile croco draco sorry and he this card basically says when it's synchro summoned you draw cards equal to the number of materials used that were non-tuners. So what you do is you go Zephyr, uh, Oracle of Zephyr Chaining 1, and then you go Croco Dragon Chaining 2. So you go ahead, oh sorry, no, you go Chaining 1, Croco Dragon Chaining 2, Ze Oracle, sorry, my mistake. And then you go Oracle, stack any monster in your deck. So you can stack the Wind Barrier Statue, you can stack the, a Starfire, you can stack a Gamma to have that hand trap for next turn. You can stack literally any of these monsters in your deck and put them on top of your deck. And then because the Croco, you get to draw those cards instantly, meaning Meaning, oh, I've plussed, I've plussed any monster in my deck that I wanted. So it's basically just a free combo to say, oh, I draw anything in, I want in my deck pretty much. So he draws any monster, which is really, really good. He's also playing three pot of prosperity, which does somewhat stop the Zephra combo here. But I'm assuming he's playing this for more consistency purposes. And personally, 
I like prosperity in pendulum decks for a lot of reasons. One, you can use your dead pendulum monsters, the ones that you can't pendulum summon back because you don't have those zones, to go ahead and get rid of the cards so you still have all of your good extra cards left. So maybe there's one you don't want so you can get rid of that, but prosperity gets rid of those. And two, you just excavate free and it's literally says you can still special summon you can still do pretty much everything a pendulum deck wants to do you can still search so prosperity is just a really good card in zephyr or any pendulum deck so i honestly think this is a good three of or a good two of in my personal opinion like honestly not bad choice in my opinion so free pull prosperity one reinforcements of the army i'm assuming he's playing this because well this is a warrior I, i'm not too sure um, like, it's the only warrior in the deck. The rest are, like, spellcasters, rocks and stuff. But I'm sure he's playing it just so he can get a free search for a Zephyr monster and just be like, oh, now I have the low scale that I need so I can go into anything along those lines. Um, which is not bad. It's not bad at all. Uh, one terraforming, it's the third oracle. You're not gonna not play it. Um, Zephyr Path. Now, this card is actually really, really insane in Zephyr and really decent in this format for a couple of reasons. Now, what this card basically does is you can only activate this card while you have two Zephyr cards in your Pendulum Zone with this with activated Pendulum Scales of 1 and 7. If this card is activated, shuffle all monsters you control into the deck except Zephyr monsters. Neither player can special summon monsters except from the hand or extra deck while you have cards in your Pendulum Zones. This card cannot be targeted by card effects. Destroy this card if a card in your pendulum zone is destroyed. So pretty much what this card says, what this card does is literally, oh, you can't summon from your graveyard, you can't summon from your deck, you can't summon from your banished zone. If you're playing Drytron, you can't play the game with your graveyard. If you're playing Dinos, you can't activate Double Evolution Pill or you can't activate Misk to summon from the deck. If you're playing literally any deck that requires you to summon from anywhere that isn't the extra deck or the hand, you can't do anything. So this is literally a searchable floodgate in Zephyr, because you can search it with Zephyr Divine Providence, or you can search it with Zephyr Nui. And the reason you would obviously search it with Zephyr Divine Providence, which he's playing at three, is because Zephyr Divine Providence it not only says you can add one Zephyr card from your deck to your hand, but it also says it, it also says if a Zephyr card you control would be destroyed, i.e. the ones that are in your scale that would be popped to try and get rid of the Zephyr path, you can banish this card from your graveyard instead. So you basically have free protection for your Zephyr Path and any Pendulum Zephyr card or card in Ze general that's a Zephyr card, in general, like it's, it's just a free protection and a free search. So your Zephyr Path is always protected by the Zephyr Providence, and that's just that's just mad. That's really, really mad. And he's also playing one Nine Pillars of the Yang Zing. This is pretty obvious. You go ahead and, well, destroy a Yang Zing, I believe. Yeah, you destroy one other Yang Zing monster and you can negate and negate and shuffle something back into the deck when your opponent activates it. And one Divine Pillars as well. Uh, sorry, it's Divine Strike because it's basically the same as Nine Pillars, where if your opponent activates a card or effect, negate it, but instead you destroy it. So this one shuffles, this one, this one destroys. And then finally, he's playing three Zephyr Wars. I'm assuming he's playing this because this is technically a hand trap where if you have two zephyr cards in your pendulum zone you can activate this card from your hand and you can target one other zephyr card you control and one card your opponent controls and you destroy them both so pretty much uh you have providence in the graveyard you just banish the providence to protect your card and you pop your card opponent's card pretty good card like not bad not bad at all so that's pretty much the entire main deck and honestly this is a very well thought out main deck I honestly really like what Dilemma has done here with this deck and like the ideas behind a lot of these things because he has explained quite a bit and the things that I do have kind of just like thought to myself where I'm like this is why he's probably playing it. I honestly think this is a really really well thought out Zephyr deck. So main deck I really really like but going on to the side deck though let's see what he played. He played free Ally of Justice Cycle Reader, Drytron, literally just discard, banish two Drytrons from the graveyard great card in general one lance here now i'm i'm kind of curious to why the one lance here because obviously like zephyr like zephyr can technically search it they, they can search any monster in their deck and if they put the lance here in the deck they can search it but if they're going second and they want the lance here in the opening hand then 
the one lance here isn't really going to give you that consistency to get it to your hand so i'm just thinking like why would you play one especially seeing as right now um elglish is still a deck and this card is one of the few cards that stop it along with dinos and all this other stuff um so it's like that kind of mind logic there why is that one but he played it on one along with two dimension shifter which i'm assuming is also really good in this because well you don't care about your graveyard and you don't really care where your Zephyr cards end up to be honest and if you go second the dimension shift is actually really really strong because you're not really going to be link summoning or anything on your first turn you're going to be more setting up a board for your the next turn so if you dimension shift that and your opponent just literally passes then that basically means you have a free turn to do whatever you want so i think dimension shift is pretty good um <laughs> This is uh, interesting. Camion the Time Lord. So what what does this one do again? So at the end of the battle phase, if this card battled, shuffle one card your opponent controls into the deck, and if you do, inflict 500 points of damage to your opponent. So I'm assuming this card was played in his deck to be able to out like certain boss monsters such as Dragoons, because pretty much what this card does is it just says, oh, you have a card on the board that I really don't like you having this card just says i get rid of it and that can be going for a lot of different things that can go for floodgates such as anti-spell fragrance this can go for um big boss monsters like dragoons utc this can go for a lot of different things so i'm guessing he's playing camion just so he can have a way to deal with uh big boss monsters and also just deal that 500 additional damage at least that's that's my kind of thoughts behind it why he would do that to exchange this is obviously to just be like oh you can see whatever you want in my hand you can take whatever you want in my hand i'm still gonna go off and you're gonna have no hand trap but i'm just gonna steal so to use against you so i'm assuming that's why he plays this <laughs> harpy's feather duster and two lightning storm for obviously back row removal and slash monster removal if you have them in attack and then one mind control i'm assuming so you can just go ahead and like turn it into a reaper docus or you can turn it into like a lambda or something along those lines just so you can go ahead and deal with specific things Going into the extra deck though, he is playing one Wayne. I can already tell you why he's playing Wayne. Like, I personally know why this is played because I told my mate why to play this. And that's because if he does make the Wind Barrier statue turn one and his opponent doesn't get rid of it, well, you go ahead and make the Wayne with another monster you control and then you just go do a ton of other things because like the wind barrier statue does lock you out from playing a lot of your cards and this is just a way to deal with that and get around it so you play the one way to kind of just get rid of your own barrier statue so you can so you can continue playing uh one underworld goddess i'm assuming he's just playing this as well to get rid of big boss monsters because it gets rid of them by game mechanic and also prevent more graveyard things and shenanigans and also just negate boards and stuff like that uh the sovereignty and the Rupidogus we obviously know is for the wind barrier statue the lambda is for the cypher gammas as well max is well for the back the magical musketeer package ip mascarena i'm assuming he's playing this to go ahead and underworld goddess during the opponent's turn because that's the only reason i could feasibly think of why you would play the ip mascarena without a nightmare unicorn just my thoughts on it uh one gravity controller i'm assuming he's playing this so he can go ahead and get rid of the zephyrini that's in his um extra monster zone and also so he can then go ahead and have it in the extra deck for his zephyr divine strike if he did not get the nine pillars i'm assuming that's why he's playing it gala granite is obviously for what i explained before to go ahead and search your zephyrath uh the vampire uh sheridan um i actually don't know what this card is i i know where it came from it came from the same set of sky strikers but what does it actually do so if you use a level six monster if you use a monsters with a level that is owned by your opponents for the xc summon of this card treat it as a level six so with a level that is owned by that is sorry with a if you use a monsters with a level that is owned by your opponents for the xc summon this card that this card uh this card that it, it treat it as level six so pretty much if you mind control your opponent's monster it becomes level six so I'm assuming that has something to do with this because this actually has an effect where you, uh, if it's a pendulum monster um, to use to sync or something, you can choose one monster, your opponent chooses one monster and they give it to you. So I'm assuming it's for that to just sort of go straight into this. But what else does it do? Once per turn, you can detach one, you can detach one of material from this card and target one card your opponent controls. Send it to the graveyard. That's actually pretty decent. Just a free send to the graveyard is always nice. And it, it's actually pretty easy to summon with this deck looking at the things that it can actually do. What's its, uh, what's its next effect? Once per turn, if a monster's is cards is sent from the field to the graveyard to your opponent's graveyard by a card effect, or a monster is destroyed by battle and sent to the gra your opponent's graveyard, you can do 20 CD material from this card, especially summon one of those monsters to your field in defense position. Okay. So this is essentially, oh, I'm going to send your stuff to the graveyard. And then I'm going to summon that stuff. So that's actually pretty decent. Not a bad card whatsoever. Like this is actually just 
generally I'm gonna steal your your stuff. Like that's actually pretty pretty decent, I think. And especially seeing as you have ways to steal your opponent's card and then just make this. There's, there's no real complaints here. Like, that's actually a pretty decent card. He's also playing one Wind Pegasus Agnista. This is basically so he can use any of his uh, level 3s, um, along with the level 4s, to go into the High Paladin. That's why he's kind of playing this, and that's why he explains to me. Also, it's just got a really good graveyard effect, where if one of your cards are destroyed, you can go ahead and banish this card, and then target one card your opponent controls and shuffle it into deck. So, it's got double utility purposes, where it's, uh, well, an MST, because you only control one Agnista monster, and also it's just used to go ahead and go into the Nirvana High Paladin. Crocodile, we always already explained it, is so you can go ahead and get any card in your deck with the Oracle. Omega, I'm assuming this is because of the Gammas, like it, there's no real reason to play Omega outside of the Gammas, so I'm assuming he's doing it because of that. Uh, the Nirvana High Paladin, I'm assuming he's playing this as well, to go ahead and go for easier games, because what this card does is, um, if this card is in your is Synchro Summoned using a Pendulum Monster, Tuna, you can target one card in your opponent's graveyard, in your graveyard, add it to your hand. So it's got, it's got a bit of utility to add stuff back, which is probably the main reason he's using it, to go ahead and add cards back, like maybe the Zephyr Path, if it's already left the board, or the Zephyr Prominence, if you can't get it back, or maybe even the Nine Pillars or the Divine Strike. Something like that, just to go ahead and recycle them. But the other effect of this card is, um, when this card destroys an opponent's monster by battle, you can halve your opponent's life points. So he, I'm assuming he's playing it for the fact that, well, you just half your opponent's life points, and then you do more damage with the rest of your cards to go for a, an easier OTK. That's why I would kind of think he's playing it. Um, I don't really think he would be using it just for the pendulum effect, because if this card ever did die, I think he would be losing, and like, his, I don't think this card's pendulum effect is that good, if I remember correctly. If a pendulum monster, you, if a pendulum monster you control attacks for that battle, it cannot be destroyed by battle. Also, you take no battle damage. At the end of the da damage step, if a pendulum monster you control attacks, all monsters your opponent controls lose attack equal to that attacking monster attacking to the end of this turn. So, yeah, if this card ever did end up in the Pendulum Zone, it wouldn't be as good as having like your Zephyr Ruben or your Zephyr Raph or any of your Zephyr monsters, because it kind of just turns off like your Zephyr Path, so not really the best. And the <laughs> Metaphys Horus, I kind of already explained why I think he's playing this, because one, it uh, steals your opponent's monster, where if you use a Pendulum monster to summon it, which you're going to, because every monster in your deck is a Pendulum monster, I don't know why you wouldn't. Um, and two, because if you use an Effect monster, you can target one other face-up card on the field and negate that target effects permanently which is actually a pretty decent effect to go along with this card but guys that is the entire deck profile of the first place new format Zephyrus. Uh, honestly, I feel like this deck is really cool. D like, Dilemma is just a really, really good deck builder, in my personal opinion. I've seen some of his other lists as well, and know that he actually is very creative and very skillful with his decks, and I know for a fact that he's helped other, well, high-end duelists. Like, for one, he's told me Thomas Rose, he helped him build his Burning Abyss deck, and, he, like, honestly, I feel know he's a really good deck builder, so guys, please definitely check out Dilemma in the comment section below. He's a really good duelist, he's a really good deck builder, and I would love to hopefully see a lot of you guys go support him and go check out his content because he is definitely a really really good yuki tuba so guys thanks so much for watching i hope you did enjoy please check out the links in the description because i actually have started a patreon now guys so if you guys wanted to support me in any way shape or form please go check out the patreon i know there's not really anything there right now there's just like well the general support if you want to help me you know for making all of this content for you guys or you, you can get access to well your name at the end of every video a along with also deck profiles that actually won't end up on the channel because like I make a lot of different decks online and I think posting some deck profiles on there to show you guys a little things there here and there will give you guys a little well just something else to try with so go ahead and check out the patreon it is something new and i know you don't have to you don't have to do it like i'm still going to be making loads of content and don't worry there will be deck profiles on here but if you want to go check it out i have got a patreon now and if you want to end up at the end of every video with your name go ahead but Thank you guys so much for watching though, check out all the links in the description, I'll see you guys in the next one, and definitely check out Dilemma YGO, his channel will be linked in the description below, and yeah guys, that's all I have to say, thanks so much for watching, check out the Patreon, and I'll see you guys later. Roll that one, signing out, later all.